Hello, everybody. It's here, Boothby from Sojourn Psychology, and I'm here with Jared Robinson, and we're going to talk about, well, my new book is called Loves and, Love and Love's Energy, and Jared did the cover art for my book. Yeah, pretty, pretty cool to be asked by Vitera to say, hey, let's get some art on this book. Yeah, so. exactly. And I was, I mean, I'm so grateful, Jared, that you said yes. And that it's just, you know, it's cool. It's cool to be friends with somebody for a long time. And then to do this, who would have thought we'd ever do a collaborative project? <laughs> right? Yeah, big time. I think we've known each other for probably what, 20, 25 years, somewhere in there. I think it's 25 because I was 19 when I met you. Right. And now we're midlifers, but we met when we were teenagers. Those are two different eras and we're still being creative and we're still friends and we're still, you know, doing our thing. Still doing our thing. And you know, it is, it is a uh, really potent and powerful. So we, we're going to talk about a few things, but actually this lends into one of the things that I was thinking about knowing that we were going to vlog about the book and about your art actually is what I want to talk about. But thinking about long-term friendship and, you know, deconstructing rules about religion is a theme you and I talk about. I call you my theology buddy. We talk mm -hmm. about God. We like to talk about God and accept each other's unknowing as we try to talk about God and we're both like. Yeah, just. We're just, we're just putting one foot in front of the other and trying to make sense. Everyone's got that question on the heart. What's the purpose of life? So you bet you engage it, you engage it. You either ignore it and just bypass it. Or you just say, yeah, like, let's go there. Yeah. Good question. And then it's interesting. Cause I think too, like one of the things I've had to deconstruct and reconstruct in that sort of Puritan fundamental christian view was rules about friendships with members of the opposite sex and so i remember like i don't know four or five years ago we had this conversation i don't know if you remember it but i needed it where it was like no dude we can be friends like we there's a thing called platonic friendship right yeah where not everything has to be a threat i mean a lot of i think wh where you grew up and where i when I grew up in, there was kind of just this fear and this threat about a lot of things. So you didn't engage in emotions. You didn't, uh, you know, someone of the opposite sex was either your wife, girlfriend, or like, mm, let, you know, yeah, someone else. There's a lot of things with fear. Um, and when you break that down, when you find the freedom to be like, this isn't a threat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Good things come from it. <laughs> I know. I totally agree. And it's I I'm so grateful that I I something inside of me allowed me to risk being vulnerable to express like uh, are we allowed to be friends and then somehow in your wisdom because you're friends with everybody I've said it before I'll say it all the time Jared Robinson is friends with everybody so you have a lot of all types of, of friends this is the alberta light is gonna jesus is just shining on me right now let's just be honest beam me, be me up beam me sideways <laughs> i know it's just like that is the alberta <laughs> sun in winter um <laughs> but there so there was a wisdom and and uh and then it's just nice to like like to have a dear friendship that transcends any of us versus them or you know gender or anything it's like friendship is really really important that's part of what the book is about that's part of I think I see a part of that in this in hardcore which we're going to talk about as well mm -hmm. yeah that's super cool no I've appreciated this too and even to bounce ideas off of and, uh, you know sift through questions and stuff it's good it's good to have have friends that you can do that with uh and as well as to be creative with right exactly and the creativity and maybe that's something that the younger people what we're learning from some of the generations that are younger than us is like we got to stop putting people into different categories and 
and worrying about rules why there's this this type of friendship with this person or this here there's like there's just like people we're all just people yeah yeah oh gosh yeah so many divisions out so many divisions out there that we can latch on to it's like oh that's a good division yeah i'm going to incorporate that into my life i'm going to categorize this and that and that and that and this is good and that's bad and that's to be feared and it's just like sure i guess you can compartmentalize but where does that get you um i mean use your discernment in any area of life but when you can kind of open up those things and just be like why am i holding on to that being a threat why do i deem this better than that or whatever it is right right you can kind of break down those walls and it's actually oh yeah there's probably something that's tying this all together other than our differences yeah our sim our sameness and our our being included in the same herd of love you know that's some of this this piece so when i stop looking at the differences or how i'm different i can stop looking at how i'm different then i can stop looking at how you're different yeah yeah totally yeah yeah you gotta yeah, you break that down. I mean, one, yeah, if you go if you go supernatural, uh, like you go very natural, where do I feel most comfort? Uh, well, it's when I'm surrounded by everything that is exactly like me. It's sameness um, because I'm just, everything is familiar. But I think when you kind of break that down and say, well, what else? What else, if there's something else tying this all together, and I would say, you know, I, I would put forth, like, maybe that's love, you know, and I would describe God, this ultimate thing that holds everything together as a love. Um, and, and then you look at love. Well, what is love? Is love just mean everybody's, everybody just kind of like conglomerates with like sameness? Well, no, because then there's love is divisive then because it's saying everything has to be different. And also you get all these little camps and then you kind of start setting your worlds up to be co compartmentalized and every, there's thousands and millions of different camps that you can be in. But what if there's something unifying that transcends camps or yeah. And, and and I would say, what if that's love? And 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 whatever that thing is, it's gotta it's got to encourage us to actually break down those walls mm. because it's not unif it, it can't be unifying. It can't be something for everyone if if it's leading you to division, you know. Yeah. No, I I and inclusive, um, the inclusiveness of love, the inclusiveness these things these things draw us in so when we're curious about love that's part of what where i'm coming from i'm curious about love and just holy space so be curious and ask other people to be curious draws i believe is going to draw people into something being curious about inclusivity and holy space for inclusivity as well draws people in we're talking about platonic friendship platonic love you know, because I love you platonically, we have this beautiful friendship based in we love each other. But getting out of the way of the camp, that camp of like, oh, what are the right rules? And who can I be friends with? Who can't I be? That 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 is so transformative. Again, we love rules. But they really, really do a lot of damage. Yeah, they it, it rules. I mean, there's a place for, I, I don't know, structure, I guess. I, I think mm. rules give us like a, a pseudo uh, peace, a pseudo comfort, because we can count on it. We know it. Don't cross it. Great. But then, yeah, I don't know. I think, I think that's limiting. And maybe that you need that for a time until you realize, okay, I can trust myself. Uh, and I can break down some of these walls and all of a sudden, yeah, I don't know, it gets, it gets a little bigger and then you realize, you know, each step out of where you used mm -hmm. to be, okay, I don't need to fear this. I don't need to fear that. All of a sudden it gets bigger. Um, 
but it's not anything goes. I think that's what you're saying too. Like there's, there's definitely, I think that, um, I feel very governed by good choice. Like within love, there's guidelines to have goodness and increased res mutual respect, but the, the focus is different. So it's not, it's not fluffy and it doesn't give us fair game for anything just to like love people and to believe in social justice and kindness and, and goodness. Uh -huh. I've been exploring the idea of God, of love, which I think are the same thing at the core as being relation. Um, love uh, it's more than one thing it's it's relation uh more more than one thing coming together for a purpose mm -hmm. and when you think of that or, or for more than one thing coming together has positive purpose i mean you can come together and be against each other i can come together and fight someone well that's not a positive it's not for each other um and so when you start thinking about that, so it does, there, there are some parameters to that. Not every relationship is healthy. Um, so you have to figure out, well, what's healthy there? What's healthy? How can I encourage the health? And, and then you start thinking, uh, it's not healthy for if it's only benefiting me. If, it, if I'm the only one that feels yeah. if I'm the only one that's healthy, it's mutual. So it has to work together. Um, and so trying to figure out that and then kind of looking around and just being like, what are the areas in my life where it's not working mm -hmm. together, not working for, uh, and, and that's a good, that's a good, um, starting point for me to look at my life and just be like, look at those things. What's not working here? Where am I? Yeah. Yeah. And liking ourselves. I mean, I think that we can underrate, again, we can underrate love. And then when we start to wonder like how, what, how spiritually large is love and how important there's this other thing of, we can really undermine ourselves, our value that we, we, it's good to feel good in relationships that we have intuition, all of these things. When we get so focused on the right way to do things and be as a person, we really discount like the pseudoscience of psychology is all of the ebbs and flows of the peopling which is also very theology spirituality is there's energy yeah, yeah. right totally things have effects on other things that there's yeah. a relation you look at the human body it's made up of all these little cells that are made of all these molecules like the, it's a relationship of yes the elements everything is a relationship of something and so love would be that positive relationship whether it's on a cell level in our bodies working for us or whether it's in like community human to human to human working together um yeah it could go on any scale right yeah beautiful jared it, it, it is and so so let's it it it's nice again to get out of our own way and then to meet in relationship to wonder and to refine our thinking like you know so much of this conversation is just like familiar as to like what we do whether we're talking about art or god or psychology but mm -hmm. i want to look at your picture here too so bear with me you can talk i'm just going to pull it up here oh yeah what does it look like oh yeah have you ever seen this one not once just bear with me for a second zoom is always you know what i live on zoom and yet <laughs> it never ceases to amaze me here we go let's how's that you can see it there we go yeah there we go yeah yeah so this is hardcore by a man named jared robinson <laughs> and hardcore Hardcore. And so Jared, when you, I don't know, cause it's like, you are an artist and sometimes you won't really divulge to me as much as I pressure you. Tell me this picture. But what do you think? Like if you, 
we're going to okay. analyze this man's work, what might you wonder about his art? Okay, well, one, there's two, there's two birds. All, already there's there's more than one. They're coming together. What's tying them together uh, is right in the middle of that little ball of string is a heart. Um, and so the idea behind this is what if when we all ask what's the meaning of life and uh, at our little standpoints, it's hard to figure out what's important, what's the grand scheme, if, is there a big picture? What if one day when all is said and done or even before all is said and done, we realize that love is this thing that is the purpose, is the thing behind, is the thing tying everything together. And so the string is almost, I kind of, I kind of had this idea in mind of this string as in like a timeline of humanity, of life, of just existing. And so we all have a little part of that string and that's what we see. That's what we know. That's what we experience. Uh, 5,000 years ago, there's a different part of the string, but it's all, we all have something in common existence and making our way through all of this. And what if when we unravel this big string of history and humanity and everybody, we realized that love was this thing that was with us the whole time, was actually the purpose of uh, not complete chaos, but uh, things working together for a purpose, you know, some kind of meaning rather than just random blah, like I don't know. I don't know about you and your heart or anybody else's heart, but my heart is always, I don't know if it's because I'm an artist, I'm always looking for meaning. Um, and I think that's kind of just part of the part of humanity, part of our connection. We want to connect, we want to find meaning. So what if there is a meaning? And this kind of says, like, what if that meaning is love? And I would call that God. I'm okay with that word. Some people might not be okay with that word. It's got a bunch of connotations and a bunch of history. But um, to me, God is that ultimate thing that I am following, that I deem as something uh, worthy to um, pursue and to participate in. And in my Bible, there's a verse that says God is love. And so I can take that and just be like, okay, I'm going to run with that. And uh, if there's more to that, great. I think I, that's great. I, I can also accept my humanity and just be like, hey, I'm just this little timeline in that string. I'm not going to get the full picture, but I'm going to grasp something that I find meaning, meaningful and truthful and run with it. And this picture would kind of challenge that to be like, what if it's love? What if it's not just chaos? What if it's not just like, uh sur self survival what if it's not eye for not whatever it, like what if it's love and and as you step into that things grow things work things are for each other to me that's the ticket like that's awesome i don't think there's anything bad in that only yeah yeah there's something bad in that when i kind of get it wrong and you know I, as i pursue that with other people like we're all imperfect so I'm gonna I'm gonna mess things up. I'm gonna mess relationships up. Um, but love is probably gracious and says, "Hey, well, I'm in it for the long game." So yeah, I, I I don't expect you you know everything to be perfect. That's that's not the equation of love. The equation of love expects us to be what we are, not what we aren't. Um, and so that gives me permission to enter that imperfectly also give other people the grace to be imperfect in my life and we ebb and we flow and we learn and we love and all that. I think it's a beautiful thing. So it's totally beautiful. And, and it's, it's this, I, I appreciate hearing that, especially when you talk about the grand, the grander sense of inclusion, like it's not just including the person beside me, no matter how similar or different they are in this life, you're also noticing like we're like the grand inclusion, like our our sort of the ancestral inclusion. There's this this harder thing to understand of time, 
when we get into all of this spiritual landscape. I also like too when you you know the heart is at the center, and the the string, especially when you explain it, has so much vital importance, but it's messy. Mm -hmm. Good one. Yeah, totally right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, um, yeah, I love it. And I, I just love this piece, like for me too, with love and love's energy and the idea of, you know, self-love and then loving other people, the energy between people, but ultimately love's energy, like that heart in the center that we're just trying to discover this spiritual principle of love. Mm -hmm. So I it's mean, beautiful. It's a beautiful picture. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can also look at this as in very just like, uh, like a couple, like it just lovebirds, like you could look at it in that. And I don't think that's wrong. I don't think that's fully encompassing everything about love um, being like, it, it doesn't, there, there's the grand scale, like you say, but then there's also that every relationship we have, we get to experience that. So it could be, you know, a couple, it could be, and, and the beauty of a relationship like think of any relationship that works long term there's graces there's uh, we ebb and flow with them but we're for them they are for us um so you can look at it in kind of the 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 micro sense of just even two people or a yeah. small group or a city or a country or a world or or humanity over time or you know it can get super big it can go super small and we can participate it to participate it in in like a very micro sense of just like two people three people whatever a family um uh, but then i think that's just that just gives us a glimpse of just like the bigger the biggerness of what that has been and i is. love that yeah and then even i like that when you say lovebirds because we uh, we used to have a lovebird when we were first married and then jason had lovebirds before but Birds are fascinating creatures. And when you think of love bird, so there's this, you know, love bird, we think of the term for, for coupling, but then sometimes love birds are not, they're, they're not coupling. So it could be, it's like parent child. It's the, there's something sacred in the dyad love energy experience. And when we have those micro, like you're saying micro, but the dyad love experience you know, what you have with Melanie or with your girls, what I have with my, with my, with Jason or the kid, my kids, it's like in that special one-to-one -one dyad, it gives us experience and hope for one-to-two to one-to-three to one-to-one one million to like me grabbing this rope in the greater scheme of time. Uh -huh. totally. That's beautiful. That's a, that's, I love that. I love it said love bird <laughs> uh i mean yeah i mean you go on the literal sense you read a book you you look you go to an art gallery i mean that, that's lit the literal uh observation is one way to look at things yeah. um and so this one is literally two birds so you can just stop there and just be like great it's two birds it's about love it's about uh, you know the person Beautiful. i love or it could go bigger <laughs> exactly so we could keep talking about the picture i'm going to stop sharing so that we get big again because why not that's it there we go beautiful jared and i just oh wow it's so nice to hear you talk about your, this picture and to share its meaning and importance to you and it fits you know what with with my idea of love energy and it's it's interesting um I think my experience of writing and the roller coaster of, of producing creatively and then the vulnerability of like trying to put it out there. My artist friends have been just like so chill and like, yeah, of course you created something and of course you're putting it out there. But it's it's fascinating to me that cheering on. Like, our, I don't know if you've thought about this, but the love of the art community, when you're in your art walks and you're around the peers, have you thought about that? Like, what do you think about? Yeah, big time. It's, I mean, you do anything long enough, you you get more comfortable with it and, and you become okay with 
what I would say was the challenge in the first place about doing anything creative and sharing it is the vulnerability of it. This is something that I've created, that I've thought about, that I've done with my limited skills and style and angle of doing things. And I made something and now I'm going to share it. Anytime you share something in our world of of opinions and division and yes, that's good. No, that's not. And, and, and pinning things into camps. It's very vulnerable to say, I'm sharing this with you um, because you will get those opinions back. I'm just like, Oh, uh, you know, not the right color. And there's so many reasons why someone might not like something someone else did. It's, it's subjective, um, but that's okay. So as an artist, I have to be okay with sharing something and it not being someone's favorite. Yeah. Um, and what comes with that is I will also get opinions that people do love it and, and I will get encouragement, but vulnerability, you kind of open yourself up to both coming yeah. in. And if you can get to a place where you can just hear both of those comments coming in and not let either one of them make or break you. I'm mm -hmm. doing this. If you're passionate about it, you're not relying on those opinions to come in. You can let them be opinions and you can continue doing your thing and you can be fueled by the good ones and you can appreciate the honesty of, you know, the, the not good ones um, and allow humans to be humans. There's a little grace there, right? There's a little bit of there, a love in being creative, sharing it, allowing people to respond to it differently than you. Um, all over the map, but it is very, very vulnerable. And uh, yeah, proud of you for putting out this book and launching right in. The creative process is good. It's so good. And then uh, you're alluding to, and I, I think you would use this word, it just didn't come to you, but it is this participating, you know, we get to participate. And so it's such a special thing. So I don't know if anybody out there is creating art or books or whatever, but there's this roller coaster of all the highs and lows, the anxiety that this is and the that's, and then grounding in the participating of this, you know, this thing that we didn't, it didn't have to belong to us. Hardcore didn't have to belong to you. I love that image behind you. I told you before I hadn't seen that one. These things don't have to belong to Derek Robinson. This book didn't have to belong to me, but they don't. And then we're just participating it's this constant sort of, for me right now, I'm finding the battle with ego of let the book do its thing. I'm just participating and get out of my own way and my own desire to control and let the art do the art thing and the spiritual message do the spiritual message thing and the psychology do the psychology thing. And then... Yeah, it's a, uh, it's, you get to offer that. You get to offer that. Sharing something creative is an offering to someone else. It's like, hey, I'm going to offer you this. And if we hold on to that offering, it's not really a gift to someone else. It's like, I am. if it's contingent, I'm offering this to you, but only if you like it. No, yeah. if it's truly an offering, if it's truly a gift, you don't have to like it. You can love it or hate it. Um, and I, if it's truly an offering, I gotta, I gotta let you, I gotta let you um, go through your journey with that piece, right? Yeah, I think that's a beautiful. I've never thought about it as an offering, and especially sort of old world views of offering and what was a better gift and all these things. But you give what you can give, and if you have less to give, or you know, for me, this is my first giving, so I don't know. Is it, is it going to stink as a burnt offering or is it going to smell sweet? I don't know. And mm -hmm. so there, but there's always, I guess for you as somebody who's wiser in the like creative giving process, it's, it's always an offering and there's a vulnerability and like, is this, I guess our humanness is going to be like, is it enough? But it's a, it's an offering that is yeah. it enough? Doesn't really matter. It's the participating in the offering. Right. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. You can, you can get caught up in these other uh, things that can define that, that process of giving and sharing and creative uh, creativity. 
or you can also let those little things um, go. And, and the, I don't know. Yeah, it's such a let go, such a let go. Creating something, you know, pursuing past a writing block, a painter's block, whatever it is, pursuing that, sharing that. Um, yeah, it's such a it's such a release. And then also, if you're going to sell a piece, you're going to sell a book, you're going to sell a piece of art. Yeah, it's a let go of just being like you're gonna you're gonna connect to this differently, and I I cannot be I cannot hold you into exactly what I thought when I made this. I gotta let you connect with this, and that's how it's gonna breathe and have life, um, and not be oh wait wait wait, wait you thought you think it means that no it doesn't it means this well you can share your your yeah. your thought, but allow the allow, allow everybody to connect differently. Right. Yeah. The offering is going to meet you where you're at. So your pictures meet me where I'm at, like heart, hardcore. I have it in my office. So if my hand can do the the, the thing. It's back <laughs> there. If I, I can't do it, but you can see it. Um, And the offering it is to me and how it meets me just where I'm at. And then love and love's energy. The offering is going to meet everybody where it meets them at. Yeah. And it is, it's a beautiful thing. So I just thank you so much, Jared, for you being you and taking all the risks that you take creatively and being just like a beacon of art in Edmonton, because you are like everybody, it's just beautiful. And you're consistently part of the art community and that's important. Mm -hmm. um, and it is a part of love and it's part of being love and light exactly where you're at. So thank you. And thank you so much for being a part of my my little thing that's awesome yeah thank you for the kind words and i'm glad that i'm able to encourage you and right back at you right back at you i appreciate your encouragement along the way it's uh it's a fun journey and uh the let go allows us to just fully just be stoked on it be passionate about it dive into what what matters to us and uh let yeah. it let it breathe let it breathe. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Jared. And so we'll say peace and love. And uh, yeah, I'll put Jared's information below. So, oh yeah, double peace, yeah, extra double, peace. Double. Dubs. Dubs peace. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks. Bye. Awesome. Thanks.